Jesus. Welcome back. In this video, I fully reassemble this XJ650 modified engine. Hope you enjoy, hope you learn something. Uh, if you want to see more videos with this type of detail, please help me by making a small donation to my PayPal account. I'll put a link in the description. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. So, just kick things off, I uh, set the ring gap. So, it's a pretty simple process. Uh, just insert the rings in. I use the piston to push it down so it's um, square to the top of the head and then I simply use filler gauges to measure the gap and they're all right uh, at the lower end of the spec so in this case you'll see it's about 11 thou on the, uh, the top ring which is good. Another thing to note is with the oil ring just see the join here make sure that doesn't overlap when you install those. And here's one of the pistons with the rings all set up ready to go. So the first step in putting this engine back together is installing the primary chain guide and uh, this is the new replacement from Yamaha uh, which has just two holding bolts instead of three like the original version. So uh, the 6mm bolts, um, I use medium strength Loctite on all internal engine bolts like this and these are uh, torqued up to uh, 7.2 foot-pounds and most of the 8 mil bolts on this engine are torqued to 14.5 pounds. Once that's in, uh, I just installed the starter idler gear which is pretty simple. It's just got a little pin and it's held by this bolt and little tab. So again, torque this bolt up and this particular bolt has a tabbed washer to make sure it doesn't come loose. So once it's uh, talked, I just obviously knock the tab over. Now you'll notice I use this assembly lube quite a bit. Uh, it's raw purple, uh, but anything similar to this is good. And you know, you don't want to do all this work uh, to only have the first startup where you might have 50 or 100 revs with no oil. So definitely use assembly lube. Uh, this is the O-ring I was waiting for all that time and it just sits in between the crankcases and seals off the main oil gallery from the oil pump. So this is one of the changes I made to increase this from a 650 to a 820cc and that is, uh, this is a crank out of the 750. So the crank here is 750, the rods are out of a 750 and I've got 3mm oversized pistons. Now before you put the crank in make sure you put the primary chain on and uh, this is the top half of the casing so the other thing is again assembly lube on the bearing faces and this crankshaft is now ready to lift in. So this is a 750 crankshaft with the conrods. You need to make sure the conrods are tensioned up properly and the primary chain's on. Simply lower it into the top half of the housing. And one thing I probably should have done was installed the crank seals first. It's probably easier. So um, what I do here is just lube up the crank seal uh, and then a little bit of grease on the shaft and uh, you can see I've lifted this crank out again lower it back down and we're all good again once it's, once it's in position just make sure that it rotates properly which it does and it's all looking pretty good the next thing is this starter clutch so the starter clutch uh, needs a bit of lube put the gear in that gear only rotates one way obviously um, and once that's lubed, just uh, 
connect it onto the primary chain, make sure it engages with the idler wheel and lower it into position. This is the spline shaft for the alternator or generator so it just goes straight through that starter clutch. There's a bearing on the other side and you can already see that primary chain just tensioning up nicely. So um, once that's in, uh, you put the spray nozzle in. So this little spray nozzle here was what caused me all the, the rattle in the first place and this is a new one and this lubricates the primary chain. So the only thing that holds that spray nozzle in is this bearing housing on the generator shaft and you can see it sort of got a little blank on it that holds that nozzle in. There's three Torx bolts. Tension these up properly and that is basically the, the generator uh, back together. Put the half rings on this bearing. This is the main dry shaft bearing and there's three more half rings as you can see here for the middle gear and the transmission. Here's the middle gear, just some assembly lube on there as well. Uh, connect it properly to those half rings. Uh, there's a seal there that also fits into a groove. And then uh, this is part of the transmission with the clutch basket on it. Make sure that chain's on, which is for the oil pump. And this one not only has a half ring, but it has that little pin. So you need to make sure that pin is where I'm showing you because that fits into a groove on the lower crank casing. So here's the lower crankcase. I'm just blowing it out with air to make sure it's clean. Here's one of the transmission bearings, just tapping it in. And uh, there's the transmission, one of the transmission axles. So that just slips in. That one there will only go in without the fifth gear on. And so what I do here again, a bit, bit more lube, push this fifth gear on. And once that's on, uh, there's an outer bearing. Now you see this outer bearing is actually, it's a uh, deep groove ball bearing. It's open one side and it's got a seal on one side and that seal actually needs to face outward. So um, once it's lubed up, uh, it's a little bit of a tap fit. You might be able to push it in by hand, but uh, just a light tap and that's in. The cover for that's got this O-ring. Need to make sure that O-ring's on. And then once that's uh, in position, three six mil bolts, bit of Loctite, torque them up, and that's that main transmission gear in the lower part of the casing. Next up is the gear selector uh, barrel. So just sliding this in here. Uh, this is just a, a bush really as part of the casing. Make sure it rotates properly. Insert this pin, which is what holds it in, and this pin is held with a 6mm bolt and a tab, and just above that there you can see the neutral switch with a copper gasket. So here you can see the tab. Uh, again, a bit of Loctite on this one. Uh, torque it up, and you can see there it's going nowhere. Same thing, tension up the neutral switch, and we're all good. Here's the transmission fork, so they're numbered 1, 2 and 3. Now the numbers face outwards to the left, so this is number 3 goes on uh, that side there, number 1 goes to the left hand side of the engine and number 2 is in the middle and number 2 drives off of the selector drum and it sits up there for now. Again, more lube put this shaft in. Now this shaft just slides in. The only thing that holds that shaft in is actually one of the crankcase um, bolts when it gets put together and it just stops it from sliding out. So that slides in. Make sure everything rotates properly and uh, that is looking good. Then what you do is get the, um, the selector drum and just turn it by hand and just make sure that the gears uh, move around properly. Uh, like they are here because you certainly don't want to put this back together and find out that there's a problem and the other thing now on the upper casing here you can see that primer chain is nice and tight just make sure everything turns freely and this is starting to look really good now here's the lower casing you can see there's a little slot here you need to ensure you don't get any sealant in that space so what I do is just put a bit of masking tape and it, keep it away by a couple of mil uh, I bought a brand new uh, cam chain as well, so you need to put it on at this stage. 
this is a split chain from Yamaha. If you have a aftermarket chain that's one piece, that obviously needs to go on um, before the crank goes in. So just putting some sealant in here, this is uh, equivalent to Yamaha Bond number four. It's the same stuff I used on the Mozuki. I actually put some around the crank seal contact points too, just to be sure. And you can see there, just keeping away from that little oil hole around the crank bearings. So you don't need much sealant, so keep that as a thin film. Again, assembly lube, and uh, just check that everything's right, and this should just lift into position. Now, you've got to be careful to line up that transmission fork uh, onto the trans prop, and you can see it through the uh, sump hole there. Um, and if you've done this right, you'll see it here. It just basically lifts on really easy. There shouldn't be any interference, and it, there it is basically on. First thing you do is put the 10 8mm bolts in that hold the crank. There's two of them without washers and they fit inside the oil filter and inside the engine. You can see they're all marked and those numbers marked on the casing just represent the order you need to tension these in. So I progressively go around and tension them up properly. Once that's done, I check that it still rotates properly. And you can also see inside the engine here, once I turn it over, uh, all of the numbers that represent, like I said, the tensioning order. Once they're all done, there's a couple of shims that you need on the middle gear, and I just lower this in, and uh, that is set separately. And then you put the main drive shaft in. Now this will be uh, just a light tap in, and I'll set this up a bit later in the video, and I'll show you how to do that. So just have it in so it's nearly up against the flange. The middle gear has two um, uh, plates with torque screws that hold them in. Once they're in, you need to peen the edge over into the little slot there that you can see, and that just locks them in. Now, I bought a new uh, set of clutch plates, just EBC, because I like the standard sort of feel. You put these in oil. I'm just going to let them sit there for a little bit while I just sort out a couple of other bits on this engine. So here we are, just pulling out the oil uh, pump chain, checking that there's a new O-ring on there. Um, slip the chain over the gear, position it properly. You just see, I just check too that that O-ring is definitely still there. Again, put the bolts in, some Loctite, lock them down, and this oil pump is pretty much done. Now there's just a little cover that goes on there as well. And uh, that's looking good. Once that's on, just put a new gasket. Now, you'll notice that with these gaskets, I don't use gasket goo. You really don't need any on a clean face. You only use gasket goo if there's a join. So there's no join there, so there's no gasket goo. Here's the plugs on the main oil gallery from the crank. Now, obviously, I took these out, replaced the O-rings, and I wanted to blow them out because, you know, with the sandblasting and that, you need to be absolutely sure it's clean. Just putting in the clutch basket, putting that nut on, and tensioning that up properly. Um, it needs to be tensioned up to 52 foot-pounds. Now I've made a plate here. You definitely want to do something like that rather than jam a screwdriver somewhere. And then once it's tensioned up, bend over that tab and you're all good. Now the clutch plates are sat in oil for a little bit. Put them on progressively. One fibre plate, one friction plate. Um, put them all on. And once they're on, you just put the clutch cover on and the thrust uh, bearing there. Now you notice on this case there's a dot and there's a dot on the clutch basket. You need to line those up for this to engage properly. Put the new springs in, six mil bolts, tighten them up. Uh, and again, they uh, torqued up 7.2 foot pounds and that's all done. This is just a little deflector plate. Uh, it sort of engages into the casing, so just take time, make sure that fits in properly. And once that's in, uh, before I put the gasket, this is one occasion where there is a join here, so you can just see, I just put a little bit of gasket sealant, maybe an inch or so on each side of that join, and that's all you need. Put the gasket on. 
lift the cover on, uh, and when this goes on, you need to align the clutch lever, which is quite easy to do. Um, so that just rotates. You, you get a feel once you know that that's engaged properly. And uh, same thing, just go around, tighten all the bolts up, torque them properly, and that is the clutch um, all back together. Now on the opposite side, don't forget to put this plug in. So this plug actually ensures that there's enough oil left in the drive gear side of things. Uh, and then when you just put the gear selector in, and it needs to look like this, so that little arm goes behind the barrel like that. And the other side uh, just slips in like this. There's a spring with a little pin. So you put that spring, one spring on either side of the pin, and make sure those two little gears engage so they look like this. And um, that's the gear selector done. And this side is literally complete now. So on that side cover, I just uh, replaced the gaskets. Just two gaskets in there, pretty simple. Lock tight. And um, again, bit of sealant on the join. Put that cover on and both sides are now bolted up just wiggle that in a bit obviously uh, there can be a bit of interference because you've got to slip it through those shaft seals but that goes on without too much of a problem now here's the generator or alternator uh, rotor, so just put that on, it's on a taper, put the bolt in and that also needs to be tensioned to about 40 foot pounds and the next thing I do is install the piston. So I'll put one of the um, gudgeon pin uh, clips in on one side, push it through and then put the pin through on the other side. Um, Put a rag here because the last thing you want to do after all this work is drop one of those pins in the engine would be a real pain so there's the four fitted the pistons have got an arrow on them so that points forward you can't really make a mistake and then these two um, galleries here are the main oil feed to the head so they have seals on it so make sure you put those seals on put the lower gasket on and then before i lift the head on or the barrels uh, I just lube these up. Now this is one area you do not use assembly lube and don't use synthetic oil. This is just normal engine oil, mineral based. Uh, you want to use this otherwise it won't run in properly and just don't be scared to put a reasonable amount of oil on there. It'll burn out quickly once the engine starts. So just lower this down. Now this is four cylinder, you know, you need two pairs of hands to do this. So. Uh, you just guide them in, take your time, push the rings in. There's a little taper on the bottom. Uh, it wasn't too bad. And once they're all connected, I just give it a light tap with the end of a hammer on the, the wooden handle. Knock that down and it goes down really nice actually. Now one thing I probably should have done is put this rear guide in before I put the barrels on. Uh, you can do it either way. Uh, but if you do it like I did, it will fit. But you need to make sure that locking bolt is already almost uh, completely in. Otherwise, you won't get it in once that barrel's on. Here's a timing plate. Timing plate just goes on. It only can go in one spot. And lock that down. And then you'll see a little pin there on the end of the crankshaft. And that lines up with that slot on the timing trigger. Put that on. Bolt it down. And that is pretty much the timing now put new brushes um, in the alternator as well. So just screwing these down again. Uh, then what I do is put the stator in there, put a new gasket and push that in. There's three six mil bolts. Now one thing you'll notice with this, this has like those fins on the cover, which is pretty cool. Uh, XJ650 doesn't generally have that, nor does a 750. Uh, I got that from the 750 police model. so. I just swapped it over, it was a direct fit and I think it looks pretty cool. Once they're on, just tension them up. And now uh, this is the custom head gasket to suit the oversized piston. So these pistons are 68 mil and that's what takes it up to 820cc and that fits really nice. Don't forget this middle gasket. Um, 
So locate that in. And then after that, there's four O-rings, and this is for the YIX um, air balancing. So there's just these little holes. All it really does is it connects all the carby inlets together to help them sink. So, and I think it, it supports fuel efficiency. Again, on this side, this is the oil feed side. Make sure those metal pins are in, the seals are in, and here's the head. I completely rebuilt this. It was that low kilometre head in very good condition, but I cleaned the seats up, lapped them in lightly. Just simply put it on here, uh, put the washers on and the head bolts and tension them. And there are two copper washers on that end just there, and they are on the end where the oil galleries are, and the rest are just metal washers. Uh, again, there's an order to do these in, so make sure you do them in the right order and you do them progressively, and just pull this down nice and even. Once that's on, the front chain guide goes in, just sits in, a groove at the bottom and the top really simple so you can't really go too wrong there now it's time to put the cams in so assembly lube the cams are marked E and I so you know exhaust and inlet um, I just put the bearings on after a bit of lube there tension them down properly and um, at this point before you do this what I've done I've actually moved the crank so there's a timing mark uh, on the crank where it's T and that's top dead center what you want to do is move the piston so they're somewhere halfway up uh, so that when you're doing these cams if they're out of time and they're open that they're not going to clash on one of the pistons so I, the pistons at this point are just in the halfway position so it doesn't really matter where the cams are and here's a timing mark so see this dot on both cams that needs to line up with that arrow on the casing there and at that point you need to turn it to top dead center so the crank is in top dead center the two cams have that dot lined up with the arrow and then you simply pull this chain over now i've gone with a genuine chain which is split and then you put this link in and then what you need to do is just pin that end over which isn't too hard really uh, if you have an aftermarket chain uh, you may have to do that as a one piece chain i'm not sure Here's the chain uh, tensioner, which is out of the XJ750. It's an automatic tensioner, will fit into an XJ650. It's probably a good upgrade for that. I think it's a much better unit than the manual 650 tensioner. And here's the rocker cover or the cam cover, new seal. Put it on and that's starting to look awesome. I'll just put these bolts in lightly because obviously once I get this cranked over, I want to take this off. I want to check that the oil makes it up to the head and I want to check the valve clearances. Put a new O-ring on the starter motor. I did completely rebuild this starter motor because the brushes were worn and I think it's a fairly common thing on XJs. And I think that's actually a result of the carbies uh, blocking up on the choke uh, jets, which uh, if you look at my carby video, you'll see what I mean. One of the last things to do is just adjust the backlash in the drive gear so it needs to be four to eight thou so what you do is you keep knocking it in with the hammer measure the clearance to so you know what size shims to put in there simply put the shims in tension it up and check what the clearance is so once i do this i end up with a clearance of about five thou and it needs to be between four and eight thou so this is uh looking really good so there you go, that's the engine done. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and like and share. If you have any feedback or questions, put them in the comment section. Uh, there's still a little bit more to do with this engine. So I have done the carbies, but obviously I need to set the floats up and uh, put the carby boots on and things like that. So I'll do that at a later date. But this is essentially done now. So I'm really happy with the way it's turned out. In the next video, I'll start working on the frame. Stay tuned.